What's up, everybody? This is Charlie Bathgate, and I am back here for a fifth bonus interview with Sang Lucci and Ron Ronchero Friedman. Say what's up, guys. Good afternoon, everyone. What's going on? What's going on? So these two are very busy, important people. I don't know if y'all who are watching this know that. Ranch is going back and forth to Hawaii half the time. Lucci's flying out to Colombia. It was very hard for us to get a time like to do this, to get the three of us in one digital place. So we're doing this during market hours uh, on a Thursday morning, which means that these guys both have positions on. Um, you know, they're both they're definitely both have positions on. Yeah, definitely have positions on. They're both doing a lot. Um, it's how it goes sometimes when you are, you know, in the public space and you're uh, and you're a trader. So if you guys see them looking off screen or you know breaking the <laughs> keyboard or something like that. Uh, it's not because they don't care about you. It's just because they're also managing a lot of money, and that's what they have to do. So bear with us, you know, if we have any uh, any challenges on that front. What I want to talk to you guys about today, you know, this is obviously an extension of the Unbreakable Trader All In series that that we did. I interviewed each one of you guys individually for that, as well as uh, as Chris Cady and Wall Street Jesus. So you got all four educators in the master course for uh, for that series. And I wanted to bring you two back together uh, to talk a little bit more about like the tactical side of things and how those, you know, specifically we'll start out talking about, you know, how you guys structure some of your options trades um, and how we teach people to do that in the course and how that can lead to, uh, you know, a completely different sort of psychological experience of managing risk and trading through some challenging markets. So. You know, Ranch, I want to start with you in terms of um, some of the long term positions that you have on. And maybe we can even talk about some of the ones that you have right now and sure. just kind of give a give the broad strokes of how you manage some of these trades, the different legs that you have to these trades and how that helps you in this facet. Um, I think, you know, we we talk about this over and over again. And for me, that everything that that I do always comes back to time frame. So for example, the short term time frame or scalping for me in this environment has not been productive. So I when when that happens, I always back up in time frame. Why? Because it allows me um, a little bit more forgiveness in in being right and wrong and allows me um, the opportunity to maneuver around when things are not going as well in one area as I'd like. So for us, for me, it's, it all starts with the long term or, or and for me is 12 months or more. 12 months to 18 months is a is a long term trade for an options trader. So for me, when I when I place that kind of uh, a trade, I'm, I'm looking for quality at a discount. I'm looking to manage that trade along the way. And as I do that, you know, I have a way of, of managing that trade in, in different areas, either technically, um, I can do it based on what I see in level two, I can do uh, what I want to do based on um, things like Delta, I can do things like, um, how many points has it moved? Do I want to do I want to adjust a position every 10 points or every 20 points. So I have a lot of different levers that I can pull when I'm yeah. in long term positions. Yep. Got you. And so, you know, for the people who don't really know how your how a lot of your, your your strategy works, I mean, you are establishing these longer term positions and then you often scalp swing trade around that position, right? That is correct, especially when, for example, um, you can look at an Amazon this year and a Costco. Those are those are my two core long term leap plays for uh, for this year. Um, the Amazon we've rolled, I've rolled that up three different times. The Costco I've rolled up four different times. So what happens is at a certain point, the position, the original purchase price of the leap. Um, you want you put back into your pocket and you do that by rolling. So what that does is it allows you the mental space to be able to look at Costco on a day to day basis and decide, hey, do I have an opportunity to play this a little shorter term? For example, can I day trade it or can I trade it over a couple of days, whether that be long or short? Do I have an opportunity to take some of that profit that I have, which is clear headspace and put it to work and, and have a trade 
work out on a shorter time frame. So the longer time frame allows me to take a step into a different type of time frame on a trade in the same name. Right. In part because you're kind of trading with house money, right? Like right. You, you've got profits from that longer term position yes. and then you're you're putting those and you almost get this like weird day trading compounding profit effect, right? If it if it's going well, right? Correct. Yes. Uh, um, Luch, you know, you Ranch came into the master course five, six years ago. Obviously knew a lot about trading, didn't didn't know tape, didn't know some of your perspective on options. You you teach him everything he knows. And then, you know, fast forward now to this point. And he's, you know, often throwing new things at you, right? Things that you're integrating in. Can you talk a little bit about like how you have integrated in some of what Ranch is talking about, these more longer term tactics, or even just seeing people in the room, seeing the impact that it's had on them? I definitely didn't teach the man everything he knows. I mean, he's been <laughs> trading longer than 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 I have. Uh, I think the tape piece is something that he was he was he was, you know, he wanted to to obviously check out and, and analyze and everything. And I think it gave him a lot of edge when it comes to writing, when it comes to everything that, that he's currently doing. Um, sidebar. I was at a conference the other day and I met this guy. He, he's usually we'll have these free events at the office here and we'll invite all these traders and we'll just take a random topic and we'll talk about it. Trading related. He's usually in here messing around and he was talking about, um, he was talking about his trading lately. He's trading options, does a lot of credit spread writing and things like that, does a lot of long-term stuff as well. But he's still just so frustrated about how the the recent changes in the market here are kind of getting him so flustered that he can't hold on to certain swing positions. He can't scalp. There's a lot of things that just aren't working for him. And when I hear him speak about options here, Immediately, I think about I think about Ronchero and I think about all the different ways he has to combat issues that most people have uh, trading options in general. Um, so I think tape gave him a lot of edge when it comes to certain spots where he looks at certain levels and stuff like that, that he that, that he takes a look at because areas of interest again, like once you once you hit these certain levels where it's time to think about an entry, where it's time to think about an exit. Then you flock to the tape here, start trying to figure out if there's going to be some follow through. If not, should he roll? You know, what are what are the, what are the options that you have? And it's kind of a lot. It's, a, it's kind of a lot to think about for for somebody who isn't used to that muscle. And I think that's 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 what we do in the in the in the master course. Is what Ranchero teaches our guys to do really well. Um, and you can see it when you're inside the steam room. You know, you'll see certain certain moves. Uh, that these guys are able to to really capitalize on using stuff that Ronchero has taught them, uh, you know, like rolling, like like selling options against, you know, positions that 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 aren't doing much, and and you know, so so and iron condors and things like that on a range bound uh, trade, which which again we we look at stocks that make massive moves in two three days, and then they do nothing for three weeks, four weeks, or sometimes even three months four months and five months and Ronchero's just sitting there every single week just collecting premium you know and there's always a different there's always a strategy for the type of uh, of action that you're seeing and um you know having those tools at your disposal you know it just makes for a more complete trader if you if, if and especially from the options perspective a more complete options trader right right Ranch, do you feel like is that all accurate? Do you feel like you have techniques and tools to deal with the frustration of holding long term, longer term positions? My God, I feel like that's what everybody's looking for, right? I mean, do you feel pain a lot of times when you're holding these positions and you're like, you know, how do you manage the emotions around that when you're, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's that's a that's a great question, and you know, it can be, and and one of the things that you have to have with the longer term positions is the ability to stay very, very patient until you have what looks like it's probability on your side. And you know, what do I mean by that? Well, um, are there insiders buying, for example, is the stock that you're looking at at a place where the technical averages are offering you probability? Or are you trying to trade early and in front of that information? If you are, that creates stress and pressure because you're trying to do something before you have the scenario that you need to support your thesis, right? So that's what creates 
the stress. If I'm early to something, uh, it's because I see an opportunity and I, and I say, okay, my max position size is going to be, let's say 10 contracts, for example, but I really like this here. So I'll just get one and I'll see how this goes. And if I can trade shorter term around the one contract while I'm waiting for other things to establish themselves, I, I can do that without putting a lot of pressure on myself. Whereas if I just decide, no, I'm, I'm max position here right now, I absolutely have to be right. So there are different ways to layer yourself into a trade in a position so that it doesn't create havoc in your own brain. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, I, you're, you kind of, you're touching on this, you're sort of adjacent to this with what you just said, but I, I want to go deeper into it. I think a lot of people think of tape and I, you know, either of you can respond to this. A lot of people think of tape as, as really like you're using it to scalp, right? You're really trying to hone in on the moment what's happening, you know, entries and exits. Um, but Ranch, you, you know, it sounds like tape has had a pretty big impact for you in terms of how you manage some of these longer term positions. I don't know if that is regard to sentiment or really it is just honing your entries and your exits when you're moving around in these names, you know, can you speak a little bit to that? Yeah. And, and what I will say is, you know, the, the, the praise that Lucci gave me for, for what I brought to, um, the, the steam room, you know, the, for me, I'm infinitely grateful for, uh, what he's taught me about level two and what I've been able to do, because I don't think there's anybody that reads level two, like, and better than Lucci does. And I'm, I'm, I'm nowhere near as good at it as he is. But what I am good at is saying here are areas of support and resistance. And at those areas of support and resistance, I can look at level two and find anomalies in that area to see if the change that I'm looking for is going to manifest or not. And that's where my strength with level two comes into play right got you um luch what do you think of ranch as a tape reader where does he rank <laughs> i mean again you got to remember this is a he's, he's not coming off the bench you know what i'm saying <laughs> he's not coming off the, off the couch the bench. off the couch if he, was, if he was coming off the bench then it'd be a different story you know what i mean <laughs> i mean teaching a newer trader how to how to read tape is Good luck, man. You know what I mean? That's why people don't that's why people don't sell this stuff in reality. Um, right. Right. you know, you could try to commercialize it as much as you want, but somebody still has to sit there and read the fucking ticks. You could try to you could try to create software around it, which we which we are heavily invested in at San Lucci and Wall Street Jesus. We're heavily invested in coming up with data visualization tools for the stuff that we read on the tape because, you know, let's face it, at the end of the day. We want to be able to do more with our time and we want to be able to save as much time as possible <clears throat> and all this kind of stuff. But, you know, you're sitting there trading an NVIDIA or an SMCI these days or something that's moving really fast. There's no better tool, especially if you're a small cap trader or things like that. And even if you want to throw in options into the mix, there's no better tool to play the game than tape, especially even if you're 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 sitting there watching an options level two and watching a stock level two at the same time. There's a lot of different things that you can pick up. So. Hands down, there will never be a better tool than the tape because that is the market. It is the market. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, do you see you're a you're, you're a freak in a lot of ways in life, and one of the ways that you are that you're especially freakish is your read on tape. You know, and I think some people see that and they're intimidated by it because you you are unique in that regard. But then you know you hear somebody like Ron say, "Dude, you don't have to be as good as Lucci at." reading you tape, don't. you know, you, you, don't. you just got to be don't. able to, to leverage level two strategically at certain times at certain moments. Um, I mean, do you find yourself when you're going through the course, you see people, different people using it at, you know, sort of different levels, different level of implementation into their trading? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You'll see a lot of, I mean, once you pass the frustration stage and the frustration stage is, is it can last, uh, you know, a decent amount of time, depending on who you are. Um, you know, but once you pass the frustration stage, then people really start to dig into like, oh, shit, OK, this is where I can use this, uh, you know, to gain a little bit of edge here and there. And then that's when you start to see the real beauty of them creating their own strategies and, you know, and using tape where they need to, uh, you know, to, to give their some better executions on exits and entries and things like that. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Why do you think why do you think the frustration stage exists with tape or is that just 
well, I'll think about in general, it. or is tape uniquely frustrating to learn? Well, I think it's uniquely frustrating. I think trading in general is uniquely <laughs> frustrating. I, I think I think you take anybody who comes into the mix, especially people who come, students that come to us. We don't we don't get kids. We don't get people right off the bench. We get people that have been through some shit before. We usually get some people who have been in the game before, at least a couple of years, at least a year. And they've been tossed around a little bit. They've had some gains. They know, generally speaking, they they probably got a couple good strategies that work. So when you introduce tape or or, or anything new, remember it's, it's revolutionary for most people in the sense that they don't look at the market like this. So it's kind of you have to you have to you have to take out some of the education that they think they know. You have to take out some of the things that they think they know, and now introduce a new practice, which is which is difficult for anybody. I mean, even for even for, you know, training for different sports and things like that, you know, your body has to move in different ways. You got to train your body in different ways and all that is frustrating and it's painful and there's a lot of resistance to it. So right. I think that's, that's, you know, in general. Yeah. Talking about. Raj, what was your experience of when you first started learning tape? Were you, were you took, just like, uh, fuck this? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, what, what, here's what I find interesting is I'm, I'm very ADHD. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons that, you know, people like me struggle in an environment like a classroom, traditional classroom, school, et cetera, is, is, you know, similar like a bit to like a video game. But what's the, why is, why is there a reason that a kid with ADHD plays a video game is that, you know, you, you get feedback. Sorry, that's a downside alert. So you get a, um, you get feedback immediately, right? Trading, I get feedback immediately. Whereas in, you know, school or theoretically, I write an answer down on a piece of paper and fuck nothing happens, right? <laughs> right. Nothing happens. So why, why I'm not motivated to do that. Right. So I come into this world, I, I get this kind of feedback, but when it comes to reading tape, What's difficult about it is you see it, you can understand broadly the concept of it, and you, you're you getting feedback. That feedback is, okay, I know it's there, but I haven't found it yet. I know it's there, but I haven't found it yet. You're constantly getting that feedback loop, but everybody's different as to when they catch on mm -hmm. versus whether they, wh whether they don't. And some people, some people don't catch on. I catch on more in a in a bigger picture sense that gives me more of a um, uh, a confirmation of direction. And then I use the things that I have in front of me, like the levels to be able to find areas where I can say things like, I should manage my trade in this spot, even though I'm looking at level two, and I still think that, you know, XYZ is possible. I, al I also know that with these areas that I have, I should do something that that takes care of either a profit or a loss in this area, despite what I'm seeing uh, in level two. So for me, I would say that I got the concept and the idea within the first month or two months, maybe three months. And it probably took me three years to get to a point to where I could look at level two and say, I'm comfortable looking at that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I will say, you know, I've known Ranch for uh, what, like five, six years now, you know, and Ron, you, and you've talked about this, you know, on previous interviews we've done, you like chew on topics for a long time, because I think for you, you're like understanding something 95%, not good enough for me. I need to understand a hundred percent of this. You're like the, you, you know, if you were a basketball player, you're the guy who after the game goes back and shoots like another thousand free throws. Cause you're like, I have to make free throws in order to be successful with this. Right. So I think your process is, I mean, would you say, would, would you agree with that? Your your process is particularly sort of deep and comprehensive when it comes to learning new things. Yeah, and I think, I think that probably comes from or stems from thinking I understand something, trying to apply it and making a mistake. And I'm like, okay, clearly I missed something. What, what am I missing? So you know, understand having an understanding of how something works, you know, pulling it apart and putting it back together. I might not ever go back or ever use the detail that I've uncovered, but if I didn't get the detail, I wouldn't understand what happened when I flipped the switch. I at least need to understand it um, before I can use it. 
Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I would love if we could do it to look at some of like either Amazon or Costco. I mean, would, would you be able to take us through a little bit of how this, these trades have come together and how you've sort of legged into them and, and manage them so people can get a sense of like, all right, what, what actually is he talking about in terms of yeah, you know, the, different, you, the different up, uh, parts of this trade? If you want, I can pull up a chart um, and show you a chart on uh, Costco. Yeah. Let me show you that. Okay, work. All right. So, for example, my my basic unintelligent or or non Ivy League school quant education basically says, "Hey, listen. Over time, stocks go up, right?" I recognize that Costco is a, um, I, sh I shop there, every, well, not everybody, lots of people shop there. They have a subscription model. Um, people come in there and they, they always overbuy when they go in there. There's no such thing as going into Costco and, and spending $40. You're, you're going to spend 300 bucks when you go in there at least, yeah, right? You're not getting out of Costco. So, with um, <laughs> you know, I, all I did was I noticed that Costco was being talked about and I looked at Costco seeing that it was in this area where it had a high, it had a low, it was starting to what we refer to as consolidate in price. The next thing I know, there are some people, um, some analysts talking about, we really like Costco and we see Costco being potentially an $800 stock. So I look at it in the 500s and, and say, well, it, it's quality, it's not, as, it's not at, at as deep of a discount as I like it, but I don't want to do that much homework. I want to let other people do the fundamental analysis homework for me. Mm -hmm. I can look at it technically and say, okay, I'm willing to take risk on Costco. Why? Because I have some technical reasons to do so. I have some fundamental um, changes. I have you know, some technical averages that I'm looking at. The 50-day, the 200, from a big picture standpoint, that's important to me because it's important to institutions. So I buy some down here in this 500 area. And as Costco moves higher, I use more technical levels like this Fibonacci, which basically is a, a way of measuring percentage wise inside of a move where the stock is going. So if I look at those areas and then I can look at level two, I can make a decision like, okay, hey, I'm, I'm at a level should I consider rolling at this level? If I look at level two and level two says, hey, there, there are not a lot of buyers here. Um, you got more sellers. I can say, fine, I'll roll my position at an area like this and I'll collect some profit and I'll wait and I'll see what happens because I can afford to now wait because my average cost from being at 500, my average cost is now at 534, right? Yep. Actually, the inverse of that, right? So the opposite side, my my, you know, my so 500 minus 34 is now my average, right? So now I've got a lot of cushion to work with, and I have a lot of tolerance for shorter term movement up and down. I can just kind of set some alerts and walk away, and mm -hmm. sure, you know, lo and behold, what happens? We get to another technical level, and that's again where I look at that and say, okay, that's an opportunity for me to put some more profit in my pocket. Let's look at level two and see if there's an opportunity. Am I right? You know, so yeah, there's another opportunity. And then what happens? The stock stays inside this channel for months, right? So that that's from August until um, November. And in between here, I, I'm I'm already profitable on this thing. And I'm just sitting here waiting and waiting and waiting. I, I, there's no pressure. There's no stress. I can ignore the movements in between. If it breaks down, I've got something else to look at. But in between there, I don't do anything. And I wait. And then it makes another move. Same thing to a technical area. Okay, do, you know, I've got some earnings. I've got some things combining, some layering of things that I like to look at. A combination of fundamentals, a combination of technicals, a combination of level two another spot for me to roll, right? Put some more money in my pocket. Boom, mm. they hit the gas with earnings, a catalyst event. Okay, thank you. I'll roll again. Pull back, wait it out, come back to the same area, bang. Now I look at this and I'm like, well, I I can sit here and I can be greedy because I, I will, I'll never lose money in this position because I've managed it. 
The next area that I want to look at is this 745 or 750 area for another role. So, you know, this is an example of a position that's working really, really well. If you want to see an example of a position where I bailed out early and should not have, looking no further than CrowdStrike. And what was I looking for? I was looking for, okay, this is a um, cybersecurity name. It's more of a growth name. There are insider buyers at $97. We followed the insiders and we rode it up to some technical areas. It got through earnings and didn't go any higher. So I took the position off and look at what happened when I took the position off. <laughs> it went from, from 172 all the way up to where we're at now, right? Like the, these, these types of things happen. These types right. of things happen. And to me, it was more of a speculative growth name. I, I'm not crying. I, I made money from 96 all the way up to, uh, you know, 170 ish. So that's to me, that's still a very successful trade, but we, I left a lot of money on the table. I, I had, that is not the case in Costco, but, um, that's, an, yeah. that's, you know, an example of, um, you know, the, the good and the, the missed opportunity. And there are going to be times when this strategy doesn't always, you know, pan out that you get positions like that too. I mean, this is something that I think you guys have talked about um, a lot in previous interviews, different, um, different public discussions we've had, um, not just accepting that you're not going to catch the whole move. Right. Um, you know, Luch, I know that you've evolved a lot in that. I mean, I remember sitting next to you in the loft in New York and, uh, you know, I think sometimes you were, you were trophy hunting, you know, back in those days and you were like, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm, I'm still this. doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still doing it. But I do, I mean, I'm looking at the chat right now and you are talking about managing a position. You're talking about Bitcoin, but you're like, yo, I'll, I'll take, I'll take this. I'll take, you know, my, my profit here and, take my money and put it in the next thing. I feel like you have, um, you know, this, that, that's, that's been a part of your evolution too, is not feeling like you have to, you know, take down the entire move every single time and being able to acknowledge like, all right, that thing kept going, but I made good money. So what's, you know, what's next? Well, that's where, that's where, again, some of the tools here that, that, uh, that Ronchero has, has, has given us all, you know what I mean? I mean, there's, there's, there's going to be the, you don't believe type moves. And that's what this market has been for the last a good amount of time. I would, I would, I would venture to say since COVID. You've what, seen what's, some what's the you don't believe time move? We'll break that down. I mean, take a look at SMCI. I mean, you, you can have Ron Cheryl pull up a chart of this one. But it, <laughs> SMCI is a perfect example. SMCI is a semiconductor name that, you know, prior to even this year, you could say 2003, nobody even freaking knew about. Nobody knew about. And NVIDIA was doing its thing. AMD was doing its thing. Everything was, was, was doing its thing in this sort of semiconductor space. And SMCI was doing nothing for almost, you know, I would say six months, or a long period in time. One earnings report came out, and even the street wasn't even prepared for it. Nobody was prepared for what these guys were, were you know, was about to say. And that set off a just a – it just set off a – a parade here, a buying parade here, where it was like, okay, everybody wanted exposure to the stock. Not only that, you had shorts getting squeezed every single day. You had people trying to pile in short every single day because they couldn't believe it. And meanwhile, Ronchero, as well as many of the guys in the in the room here, and you can even look at plenty of the chats, even you know, for, for, for weeks now, have been rolling since three hundred dollars, four hundred dollars, five hundred dollars. Yeah. And and the thing moved five hundred points. You're talking about you're talking about four X's like weekly. You know what I mean? You're talking about <laughs> you're talking about stuff that you you don't see these, but you get one of these every year. You might get one of these every two years. You don't see this shit. Yep. And then while everybody's looking at the other way, like this can't be, this can't be, let's short it, let's short it, let's short it. It's just the fuel keeps going, the fire keeps going, even as we speak. Like this, this same pattern has been playing out over and over and over again and if you've actually seen it on several names not only just the smci uh you've seen it on several names and and rolling in options especially especially with options the juice and the game in options is with stuff like this you never you're not gonna see returns like that you won't see returns like that usually hey we're lucky we get a 20 percent, 30 percent scalp 
yeah. on an option on a daily basis. You're lucky if you get that. If you get that, it's great. It's amazing. Yep. You know, nobody, you know, you don't see, hey, we're going to make 400% every single two days for the, you know, <laughs> two weeks here. You don't, you know, you're not going to see that. And rolling allows you to, to take advantage of it when everybody is just kind of, you know, it's just kind of trying to figure out where the top is or where the bottom is to half of this stuff. So, and, and you know, there's there's market dynamics be between all but behind all this stuff that pushes these things and makes them do what they do. But at the end of the day, you also have to you also have to take your emotions out. And after having profits to be able to just roll them into stuff, you don't give a shit. You don't care yeah. if it works or not. And that in and of itself is the only thing that's allowing you to take advantage of it, because while everybody else cares about price and cares about rationality and cares yeah. about all this nonsense here, yeah. you're able to take some more profits to the bank. And, and that's where options really pay options pay when nobody's expecting shit. You know what I mean? When you find something that nobody's expecting, that's where options pay. And that's it, where you got to be. This is definitely an anomaly example, SMCI. However, when you recognize them, if you've seen this, you know, before you understand that into what Lucci's talking about is you, you just, you kind of ride and you know, at some point it is it, at some point it will stop working as long as you understand that and adjust along the way. So for example, on this SMCI, I started two weeks ago, I bought the 600s for March and everybody thought I was crazy. Yeah. So I, we, I literally, I said to him, he was fucking crazy. So we bought, so I, I, I started with the 600s. Um, I bought those for, uh, for 16 bucks. They're trading today. They're still trading. They're trading at $380 a freaking contract right now. So if you had bought a 10 lot, that's a $360,000 profit, right? God. So, I mean, I, all I've been doing is managing these on the way up. So for example, today I sold the, I, I just keep buying these, especially on, on any kinds of dips because it, it works and it's all free money. So I've, I've traded out of my 860s today. I've traded out of my 900s today. I bought the 1000 strike yesterday at $30. They're $80 right now. I bought the 1040s yesterday at $45. They're 104 right now. This shit doesn't happen, but when it does, you you just you have to just get in there and 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 hang on. If they if both of these go to zero, it doesn't matter because I've done so well on the other ones on the way up. But you can't do that if you're either late or you're not managing your positions. Yeah. I mean, you guys Chris and I say this a lot, you know, famous line from Chris, there are days when the market gives out free yep. money and your job is to have a seat at the table and be able and have your bag ready, you know, <laughs> to collect to collect that money. And it seems like this SMCI move is kind of one of those one of those moves. Luchi, just like you're saying, you're just like, I can't I can't believe this is happening. Your yep. job as a trader is not to build a strategy that can only work when those moves happen, right? Because it 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 that you can't do that. You don't know when those moves are going to happen, but to have a strategy such that when they happen, you can capitalize on it, right? Indeed, indeed. Yep, cool. Um, I mean, what has the tape in SMCI been like through all this? <laughs> have you guys been watching it? It's just been, oh, oh, it's yeah, been no, bonkers. I mean, I'll watch it every day. It's bonkers. And, and again, it's, it's, it's very widespread, so it's very difficult to scalp. Like, you know, it's, it's extremely, extremely difficult to scalp because you gotta, you got to pick your spots. Um, you get programs. You get market sweeps that take them down and up 20 points like that in seconds. You know what I mean? So, And then IV is through the roof now for all options, any option. So even if you get a move in your favor, you ain't making shit. If you get 10 points, it ain't nothing uh, on this thing. It's already factored into the options. So again, you know, this is now games here that need to be played at a higher level here. So your, your, your level of a knowledge when it comes to options, it has to go up if you're going to, if you're going to mess around with stuff like this. Yeah. And, and, and an example is um, we do it, when we do the live stream, the first hour uh, we allow the general public to participate and you can see a, a big difference in how the general public handles a situation like an SMCI versus uh, a trader that's been in the steam room and has been through the master course and, and how they understand how to look at a move like this and, and, kind of pick out, hey, is, is you know, a short here going to work or not? And oftentimes the, the players that have not been through 
uh, this the, the class, you know, are, are are picking the wrong spots and they're picking the wrong side. Yep. Well, that's a perfect opportunity for me to do, you know, a little shameless plug. So the the master course does start March 25th. So the next uh, live master course, the last live master course that we are ever going to do, you know, in this format starts March 25th. Um, and uh, you can learn everything that these guys just talked about. You know, they, they're they really kind of scratching the surface of of tactically how they they do all this. But if you want to learn tape, you want to learn how Ranch approaches options in the way that, you know, that they're talking about everything that they just went through. That's why we created the master course, you know, so you can do that. Um, guys, any other parting words that you want to leave with our viewers before we close it down? <laughs> you're just you're just like yo we're watching smci tape we're, i got nothing else to say I mean, all right well thanks for uh thanks for doing this thanks for double uh you know having your attention split in two directions for this really appreciate it indeed you're welcome all right y'all right. we'll see you in the master course thanks see you there later